One way that scientists learn about the endocrine system is to observe the symptoms of patients who secrete too much or too little of a particular hormone. Diseases associated with the thyroid gland are common. On this page, we will study the effects of hypo and hyper secretion of thyroid hormone. Recall the metabolic functions associated with thyroid hormone and use that knowledge to sort the following symptoms. If the symptom is associated with too little TH, drag it to the left side of the page. If the symptom is associated with too much TH, drag it to the right side of the page. Oh. <sighs> 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 Recall the actions of TH on the adult nervous system and use that knowledge to sort the following symptoms. Full-blown hypothyroid syndrome in adults is called myxedema. The term comes from the edematous, puffy appearance of patients due to accumulation of water-holding carbohydrates in the skin. Hyperthyroidism is most commonly caused by an autoimmune disease called Graves' disease. The body produces an antibody that mimics the action of thyroid-stimulating hormone. thyroid gland responds by enlarging and secreting increasing amounts of thyroid hormones. A unique symptom of Graves' disease is protrusion of the eyeballs, a condition called exophthalmus, which results from deposits of water-holding carbohydrates behind the eyes. Click the Graves' disease patient to continue. To better understand the thyroid hormone pathologies, we need to know whether the hypo or hyper secretion of thyroid hormone is a primary effect due to changes in the gland itself, or whether the effect is secondary to changes in thyroid stimulating hormone. Click Continue to proceed. Let's look at primary hypothyroidism first. It results from failure of the thyroid gland to secrete thyroid hormone or failure of the thyroid gland to secrete enough thyroid hormone due to a deficiency of dietary iodine. In both cases, the amount of T3 and T4 secreted diminishes. Recall the negative feedback inhibition exerted on the anterior pituitary by thyroid hormone. As plasma levels of thyroid hormone fall, 
the inhibition to the anterior pituitary is interrupted and the anterior pituitary secretes increasing amounts of TSH. Remember that TSH stimulates growth of the thyroid gland, therefore high levels cause enlargement of the gland. This is called a goiter. When the hypothyroidism is associated with lack of dietary iodine, it is called an iodine-deficient goiter. Such goiters used to be common in parts of the Midwestern United States due to low iodine concentrations in the soil. The introduction of iodized salt helped reduce both the incidence of iodine-deficient primary hypothyroidism and the number of such goiters. Click the image of the patient with the goiter to continue. Secondary hypothyroidism results from failure of the anterior pituitary or hypothalamus. In this condition, when thyroid-stimulating hormone, and possibly also thyrotropin-releasing hormone, levels are low, T3 and T4 levels diminish. Because TSH levels are low, secondary hypothyroidism will not be associated with enlargement of the thyroid gland. Click Continue to see a summary of hypothyroidism. Let's look now at primary hyperthyroidism. It results from a thyroid hormone secreting tumor of the thyroid gland or Graves disease. In both cases, the amount of T3 and T4 secreted increases. Recall the negative feedback inhibition exerted on the anterior pituitary by T3 and T4. As plasma levels of the thyroid hormone rise, the inhibition to the anterior pituitary increases and the anterior pituitary secretes decreasing amounts of TSH. Because of the hormone pattern observed, we expect that primary hyperthyroidism will not produce a goiter. With low TSH and the concomitant loss of its tropic actions on the thyroid gland, we might expect the thyroid gland to remain the same size or atrophy. That is the case for thyroid hormone secreting tumors. In Graves' disease, the body produces an antibody called thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin, TSI, that mimics the actions of TSH. The high levels of thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin stimulate growth of the thyroid gland and can produce a goiter. Note that increased levels of thyroid hormone do not diminish production of TSI because there is no negative feedback relationship between them. Click the image of the patient with the goiter to continue. Secondary hyperthyroidism results from excess secretion by the anterior pituitary or hypothalamus. In this condition, when thyroid-stimulating hormone and possibly also thyroid-releasing hormone levels are high, T3 and T4 levels increase. Because TSH levels are high, Secondary hyperthyroidism will be associated with enlargements of the thyroid gland. Click Continue to see a summary of hyperthyroidism.